1938, Spelling Bee became the first televised game show where contestants competed against celebrities in a spelling bee. Since then, there have been many types of game shows, from shows that focus on trivia and quizzes to shows where contestants complete obstacle courses. Regardless of the type of competition, game shows have been exciting and entertaining audiences for decades. A very common practice in televised game shows is to have celebrities as contestants. Battle of the Network stars pitted television celebrities against one another in various sports-related competitions. Every version of the Pyramid Game paired contestants with celebrities who worked together to try to guess words and phrases. And Family Feud has a celebrity edition where celebrities compete against each other for a chance to win money for a charity of their choice. In 2003, there was a show that combined celebrity contestants, trivia, physical stunts, and quizzes, all while being entertaining and humorous every episode. Let's babble about Celebrity Mole Hawaii. Celebrity Mole Hawaii was the third season of The Mole. The Mole started as a Belgian game show in 1998. Its success led to multiple international versions, including an American one that premiered on ABC in 2001. While the first two seasons of the American show were hosted by Anderson Cooper, Celebrity Mo Hawaii was hosted by Ahmad Rashad. So, how did the game work? Seven celebrities, six weeks, one winner, taking home up to a quarter million dollars. But someone is being paid to deceive the others and sabotage the games. That celebrity is the mole. The player who figures out who the mole is and does the best job of tracking and remembering their every move wins the money. Can you figure out who is the mole? The celebrity contestants work together to compete in various physical and trivia-based games. The more successful they are, the more money they make. But the more they fail, the more money they lose. What is the matter with you? And there's one person who's intentionally sabotaging the game, the mole. The level of fame of the celebrity contestants varied. By 2003, Stephen Baldwin was not the most famous Baldwin. But on The Mole, he arguably would have been considered the most recognizable contestant due to the Baldwin name and the film The Usual Suspects. Frederick Vanderwall was a Victoria's Secret model who appeared briefly in films like 54 and Wild Wild West. Corbin Bernstein was famous for the film Major League and the show L.A. Law. Kathy Griffin was a stand-up comedian who starred in the NBC show Suddenly Susan. She also appeared in several TV shows, films, and Eminem's music video, The Real Slim Shady. Michael Bowman was best known for the HBO hit Arliss and the ABC show Spin City. Eric Von Denen was on an ABC show called Dinotopia at the same time as The Mole. While he was also in the hit film Princess Diaries, he was probably most famous amongst preteens, like me at the time, as a Disney Channel star. And Kim Coles was probably best known for Living Single and In Living Color. So why is this a show that I rewatch regularly, even though I know the outcome? One reason is that it was one of the rare shows involving celebrities that felt unfiltered. The winner of the show won the money for themselves, not for a charity. I think this made some of the celebrities super intense, mainly Corbin and Steven. If Michael's a mole, he's going to wish he'd never been born. Another reason is that the commentary from the celebrities was funny. Walking on hot rocks to get a chicken? I can go to a restaurant, a nice one. I make that kind of money. Celebrity Mole had six episodes, where the sixth episode revealed the winner and the mole. Let's go through each episode and my favorite moments. Spoilers ahead. <laughs> Right away, you get multiple examples of Corbin's intensity. During the first game, On the Line, where the team has to work together to maneuver a contestant on a zip line, Corbin starts to show his intense personality. And that was miserable because Bernson yelled at me and he turned into super veiny hockey dad. Come on, Kathy, push! Okay. So that was really freaky. And then I had to stop for a minute and feel sorry for his wife. You stick Steven in the water, stick him under there, don't let him out and say, are you the mole? Are you the mole? <laughs> I'm in total control here. The look on Kim's face says it all. In between games, the team hangs out and tells embarrassing stories. Frederique reveals that she accidentally farted in class, and Corbin has a super normal reaction to that. Fred sort of sat back, talked about farting. I can only imagine how delicious that would have been to be 
sitting just in front of her. <laughs> Stephen tells a story about getting beat up by his sister, who witnessed him getting a blowjob in a car. She kind of saw me sitting there all by myself in the car. <laughs> Thrashing about. I, I don't know what, really why she reacted the way she did. She basically pulled me out of the car and beat me up wow. in wow. front of my girlfriend. That's your most embarrassing Because all my brothers gave me a high five. Yeah. You know <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy's response is the best part. I was on Long Island. I don't remember. I was, just, yeah, I was, just, yeah, it was some guy I was, and his sister beat the <laughs> up. I don't remember who it was. I remember the sister kicked his ass. I remember he was crying and then high-fiving his brothers. And I, I got my Dodge Dart and I got out of there. The second game they play is Ba Ba Black Sheep. The main challenge for the team was to catch sheep and put them in a pen. Eric and Frederic are naturals, but everyone else, Corbin is falling and Eric is literally diving. Kathy is spinning and talking to herself and having some sort of Wonder Woman moment. Whoa. Oh my God. Whoa. Okay, you know what? That little jumping thing. <laughs> Steven completes his own challenge and earns himself an exemption. After the game, the players discuss their suspicions. He really did sort of luck out in a way that he was able to get an exemption at something he was truly good at. Maybe it wasn't chance, because I'm remembering body language. And he never turned back to say, hey, who's team, who do you want to be on my, or anything like, anything like that. Nobody in this vehicle is the man. What do you think of that? That's a coalition. What do you think of that? Show me how big your butts are, kids. Tell me. So did anyone seem to be intentionally slacking there? Well, I'm sure I look like Everybody except you. <laughs> Everyone but you. Yeah, so. Which is also suspect. Yeah. <laughs> and we get to hear Kathy's failed attempt at a coalition with Steven. Someone came up to me and said, call me in my room tonight. I tried to get Baldwin to meet me in my room. Because she, quote, had to talk to me. And I swear to God, I think he thought I was going to have sex with him. And it wasn't what she said, it was how she said it. He was like, sure, babe, as long as you bring protection. They all have dinner together, where Stephen, for some reason, wears his sunglasses inside at night. And then they take the execution quiz. Questions include things like, is the mole male or female? What did the mole order for a main course at dinner? And who is the mole? After the quiz, the contestants come together to find out who will be executed. Ahmad types in each name in a super high-tech computer. If they are safe, the screen turns green. If they're eliminated, the screen turns red. When he types in Kim's name, her screen turns red, becoming the first eliminated contestant. Episode two starts with our contestants eating together. At this point, you could see that some of them are not getting along. Okay, don't do that uh -oh. I really mean don't do that I apologize. Please, it I'm bothers sorry. me and you wouldn't do it to Freddie. I'm sorry. All right. I've executed Stephen Baldwin in my head like 14 times and they're always bloody and gory. In the Take This Job game, the contestants have to do multiple activities. Fly in a stunt plane doing aerial tricks, walk on hot rocks, and jump off a cliff into the ocean. Part of the game was for each contestant to predict if the other would actually complete their task. Since Michael refused to jump into the ocean and made an incorrect prediction about Steven, he lost the team money. In underwater charades, the contestants split into three groups. Charade players, grave diggers, and players in a submarine. The charade players, Corbin and Michael, have to act out clues while underwater. The players in the submarine, Frederick and Steven, have to guess what the answers are. And when they guess correctly, walkie-talkie the grave diggers. The grave diggers, Kathy and Eric, have to dig up the celebrity grave. One of the caskets has $25,000 inside. The grave digging element is a weirdly morbid part of the game. I have moments where it's not that I'm thinking the game is absurd. I'm thinking of how absurd it is that I'm playing the game. Harrison, got him. Okay. I can't believe that I am in a graveyard with the kid from Dinotopia digging up Harrison Ford's grave. That's weird. While Kathy and Eric are digging up Josh Hartnett's grave, 
Eric accidentally lifts the lid of the casket. They whisper to one another, and Eric confirms that there are only bones in the casket. After time runs out, the team gathers together at the graveyard to see if they won $25,000. The group only got four out of the five caskets. Ahmad starts to open each casket to see if they have cash inside. He opens the first two and there's no money. Ahmad then offers the group a chance to win $5,000 if they stop opening caskets. The group declines and Ahmad opens another casket that has no money in it. He then offers $10,000 to stop. This is where the accidental bone reveal comes into play. Kathy and Eric both know that the cash isn't in there, but for some reason that I still don't understand, Eric says that they should open the casket. We were offered the gamble, and Eric knew by inadvertently opening the casket that there were just bones in there. Oh my God. Oh, skeleton. That's bad. So I looked at him and I was going, hmm. Take the 10, you know? Kathy, what do you think? If it was me, I would take the guaranteed 10 Gs. And not, nah, the not chance more. What would you do, Eric? I think there's 25 in there. I it felt is. it. I just want on record that we should have took, taken the 10. Like some sort of I think we should go for it. <laughs> I say Very. go for it. That's four yeses and one Kathy no. Ahmad opens it and reveals that there are only bones inside. Oh! What is the matter with you? He saw the inside of the casket. He saw that there were just bones in there. I wanted to kill him. The $25,000 was in the one casket they never dug up, meaning the team won nothing. Ugh, Eric. After charades, the group has dinner together. The dinner becomes an exemption dinner. Ahmad offers the contestants a chance to win $25,000, the amount they didn't win during charades, if they all agree to give one person the exemption. If they can't agree, $25,000 will be removed from their pot. Seems like a pretty easy challenge, right? Well, this starts out okay and looks like Eric will be selected by the group. But in a diva move, Corbin decides that he doesn't want to vote for anyone and wants the $25,000 removed from the pot. I'm not, I don't want to do it. I want to take the money out of the pot. Corbin suddenly became very hard-headed. I'd rather the money come out of the pot. I want to have a chance. By the end of dinner, they are unable to come to an agreement and $25,000 is removed from their total. Then they take their execution quiz and come back together to see who will be eliminated. Everyone is shocked when Steven is executed. He simply puts on his sunglasses at night and quietly leaves. Kathy's reaction isn't surprising. He was a <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, what an <laughs> <laughs> However, he's really, really funny. It made me laugh really, really hard. And I have a big weakness for that. But what a <laughs> Episode three starts with the offshore account game. Corbin is named the captain and Eric is given the title, someone who looks good on the beach. As captain, Corbin has to lead the team in building a raft that will carry them across the water to the $30,000 prize. And Eric has to make them smoothies while they're building the raft. While Eric is making smoothies, Ahmad showcases his amazing metal detector acting skills and offers Eric an exemption. All he has to do is find $15 worth of quarters in the sand and take a kayak out to the $30,000. The money will not go into the pot, but Eric will be exempt from execution. Also, Steven makes a brief appearance as the cabana boy that Eric has to rent the kayak from. The group notices Eric looking for quarters, but he lies and says he's looking for material to help the team. Ahmad puts him on blast and reveals the truth. I offered Eric an exemption. All he has to do is take that kayak over there, row it out there, grab the flag before you guys do. He gets the exemption and no money will go into the pot. The only stipulation is he has to rent that kayak. The team, mainly Corbin, starts to rush construction. Eric gets $15 and quickly kayaks his way to the money, winning the exemption. The rest of the team is barely in the water. Then Ahmad presents a twist to Eric. If he gives back the exemption, $60,000 will be added to the pot. Eric decides to add $60,000 and sacrifice his exemption. He then tells the team his decision. Thank you for making it perfectly clear who the mole is. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. You want to say thank you as well. Thanks. We wanted to stay in the water. The way the 
players reacted, I wasn't expecting that. They weren't overjoyed when they found out what I did. They seemed very suspicious. I was shocked he took the money instead of the exemption. I don't know any other player that w wouldn't have taken the exemption. When Eric turned down the exemption, it made him look both less like the mole and more like the mole. Even though he helped the team, his actions made him look more suspicious. The next game they play is Looky Looky Hot Pepper. The team has to answer pop culture questions and pick one mouse that will run to a random pepper. If they answer the question correctly, they can eat the pepper or choose to pass it to another contestant. If they answer the question incorrectly, they will have to eat the pepper. When they eat it, they have to leave it on their tongue and show everyone that they chewed it before swallowing. Each pepper is worth $10,000 and ranges in heat. They are also offered milk to reduce the burn at $1,000 a glass. I got a nice price for you, $1,000 a glass. What? Hey, this here retails for $2,000. <laughs> that is... You might want to consider that. You have to pay $1,000 if you want to eat it. You might want to, you might want to pay a million dollars if you eat the wrong pepper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this feels like one of the easiest games. Even though some of the peppers are really hot, all they have to do is eat a pepper. Corbin, Eric, and Michael all answer their questions incorrectly and have to eat a pepper. Ahmad innocently asks Corbin if he's all right. In a macho and unnecessary move, Corbin eats another one of the hottest peppers. Out of the blue for no reason, he takes another number six hottest pepper and pops it in his mouth to show what a big man he is. Uh, that was a little hotter than the last one. Yes. <laughs> Frederick and Kathy answer their questions correctly and pass their peppers to Corbin. During this time, he takes unnecessary extra bites and has to ask for milk. Ahmad presents the team with a bonus $10,000 if everyone agrees to eat a new pepper that he brings out. Corbin is the only one who wants to do it, so Ahmad raises the bonus to $25,000, but Frederic refuses. This disappoints the team and adds a layer of suspicion on her. Frederic really surprised me today. All she had to do was take a Bite. Yeah, because you didn't want All right, well, no, you didn't want to I mean, I tell you, these peppers, I'm not going to touch them. I didn't care about the 25 grand. Everybody, Corp has lost 25. Michael, I hadn't lost any money yet. It was not going to happen. I was not going to eat that. I'm disappointed in you. Okay. I don't care. I hate peppers. At dinner, Ahmad makes the team rip out the 17th page in their journals and reads everyone's notes. After he reads Frederic, Michael, Kathy, and Eric's notes, logically, Corbin would be the only one left. A3, Sunday, Fred, blue top, brown belt, khaki shorts, Mike, green pants, Eric, red shirt, no Steven in makeup. That's not mine. <laughs> That's not yours? Whose is it? There's nobody left. That's not mine. Corbin could still be the mole. They take their quiz and gather together. Ahmad types in Eric, Kathy, Michael, and Frederic's names, revealing they are safe. Then he types in Corbin's name, confirming his execution. He handles the execution pretty well. I hate this game. I'm saying the worst about this game you could possibly imagine. In Hula Palooza, Kathy and Frederic have to surf and stand up for five seconds straight, while Michael and Eric hula dance. Frederic manages to stay up for longer than five seconds, but Kathy struggles and gives up before time runs out, losing $20,000. I'm out, I'm out. No, I'm out, dude. What can I say? I got scared, yeah. Honestly, I find it relatable that she gave up early. Knowing that Eric can surf, Ahmad offers $10,000 to the team if Eric can stand up while surfing for whatever amount of time he selects. For some reason, he selects 20 seconds and fails. Ugh, Eric. We then get a glimpse of Kathy and Eric's coalition. There's nothing until the final quiz. It's on old stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, but don't tell Freddie that. It's cool. I always openly say to him, okay, this is how I'm gonna vote tonight. You do what you want, but I really think this is the way to go. I was completely working on trying to get the other players to think that there's a chance Eric is the mole. In the exemption game, the team splits into pairs to compete for the last exemption. 
In round one, they have to solve a mathematical brain teaser. Kathy and Eric are great and get through it very quickly. Michael and Frederic struggle. Since Kathy and Eric solve the questions faster, they get to go to round two, where they compete against each other. Before starting, Kathy wants to play rock, paper, scissors to establish who will go first, but then reveals she has no idea what that is. What the hell is that? I don't know how to play that's it. That's scissors, that's scissors. It is? I kill you. So you go first. I never played that. Eric and I played rock, paper, scissors, and so I went like that, which I don't know what I thought that was, but I thought it might be paper. And it turns out it's si. It's not even scissors. And then whatever he did, beat it, and I don't even know because I've never played it. Round two is a timed quiz that Eric wins by three seconds. In round three, Eric has to play a memory card game. The rest of the team is blindfolded and dropped in a new location. They have to find Eric before he completes the game. If he completes the game, he gets the exemption. But if someone finds him first, they will stop the exemption and win $20,000. While Frederick and Michael start running to find the restaurant that Eric is in, Kathy takes a different approach. I had a very interesting strategy, which was I was determined to not run. I did not want to sweat any more today than I already have, which is buckets. So I immediately turned to a group of people and said, who's a local? Can you describe how to find a restaurant that looks like an Admiral's Club or something that has an elevator in it? She then hitchhikes to the wrong restaurant. Eric completes the memory game and gets his exemption. In a surprisingly tense moment, Frederic finds the restaurant and tries to go in, but some random man physically stops her. And there was this complete moronic guard standing at this restaurant. And you're supposed to be able to come up here? He didn't want to get me through, and we almost got in a fist fight. I'm not kidding! Whoa, wait, wait, wait. wait! Don't climb up on this thing, you'll get hurt. And even the guys behind me said, cool it, to the guy. It got pretty nasty there for a moment. And I was like, get out of my way. <laughs> Frederic finally gets in, and Kathy and Michael follow. At dinner, the team celebrates Michael's birthday, and then they take the quiz. They gather together. Ahmad types in Michael's name first, and he is eliminated. This is my favorite episode. It starts with a three questions game. Each contestant has to complete a questionnaire about the other contestants. One contestant will hide in the forest, while the other two have to guess how the hidden contestant answered their questions. If they guess correctly, they will find the hidden contestant and win $10,000. At this point in the game, it feels like everyone is completely over each other. Turn on. Oh, wow. Not such a big mouth, little scared. boy, because I <laughs> kick you. <butt. laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Eric kind of went, uh, yeah, you go. I was like, you know, up yours. I mean, I'm not going to follow your orders. Maybe she felt threatened by me. I, I don't know. There was definitely a moment of like, <laughs> Frederick and Eric and I are just a, not a good combo. I don't feel like it's a particularly feminine nurturing group. Frederick hides first and Kathy and Eric find her, earning $10,000. Eric hides next, but Kathy and Frederick are unable to find him. Kathy goes last and Eric and Frederick are unable to find her. Ahmad then reveals, in front of everyone, that Kathy just answered Frederick for every question. You, uh, answered all the questions with Frederic. Oh, I didn't know you knew that, or we're going to reveal it. <gasps> was I, that some sort of strategy? Brilliant. Yes. I figured just go with one person down the line, no matter what. And then maybe after the first one, they'll think, oh, she's just going to pick. So I answer Frederic for every single question. I didn't even read him. You know, just filling out one name, saying it is a strategy. I mean, it was a strategy in her head, or, or at least that's what she said. I mean, it definitely, I mean, it was a sort of a molish move. At dinner, they do imitations of each other. Eric's imitation of Kathy is perfect. Well, I got a good one for you tonight. So the other day I was... You son of a bitch. Is that supposed to be me, you little <laughs> What am I, Shecky Green? What, where's my stogie? And do I actually do my own rim shot when I talk? But I'm bummed. Shh. Don't try to make up with oh, me. Wait, this is photo, oh my yeah. God. The last game is It Takes a Thief. The group has to open a safe. They are given a riddle that will teach them how to turn on a black light. They will need this because they have to find clues that they can only read under that black light. Those clues will help them discover the code for the safe. During the game, you can tell that they are still all annoyed by each other. Oh God, hey, hello. Go. 
Get the clue from Amon. Okay, I'm getting the clue from Amon. Where, Where is, is he? He's the... over here. Run, Kathy, run. <laughs> off. Eric turned into a combination of Corbin and Steven. I wanted to kick his head so many times. Now, I know that sounds harsh, but I don't like to be yelled at. They do find some items to put under the black light, but as a viewer, you could see that they've missed some things that would have helped them. They eventually realize that the clues are on them. Kathy stumbles upon a clue from earlier, and they finally figure out the code to the safe. The team was led to believe that when they opened the safe, the game would be over. But there was more. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Done! Yeah! Yeah! What? What? We open the safe. I'm expecting just money flying everywhere. There's another damn clue. I was angry. I was resentful and angry. And I blamed Eric. Inside the safe was another clue that led them to a pool. At the bottom of the pool were bags of money attached to weights. Frederick and Eric quickly detached the money, but Kathy isn't as quick. I dive down, I open my eyes, and I swear I must have some freaky, horrible underwater vision because I just see a white blobby ball. So I'm like, I guess that's it. So I go as hard as I can down, I reach down, and I don't even touch it. I don't even touch it. Kathy, come on! I dive down again really, really hard, and I'm determined. I'm gonna get that bag up no matter what. So I'm now dragging the weight bag, and then I come up thinking I almost drowned. So I'm going, I'm not capable of doing this. It's too heavy! No, 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 it breaks! It breaks! It breaks! Just pull all this! It's too It breaks! Come on, the bag! Come on! The no, I pull the fabric! No, the top part, not the top. bottom part. The top. You have five no, minutes you can't left! Do it. You can't. You're this bag was right underneath her and just must have described to her what to do maybe five times in a row and she just kept saying what 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 and, and wouldn't go under I mean I was almost screaming at her so he then said get ready pull it up pull it up just go pull it up why don't you get it pull it up just pull it to the surface as hard as you can which really wasn't what I was looking for And then Eric goes, with this, first of all, with this expression, why did it take so long to get the bag? I, I'm not kidding, I was like lifting up the oh, bag yeah. of weights going, this is so heavy that... They win the game and the final pot is $233,000. They then take the final quiz and the results are revealed in the final episode. The finale brings back all of the executed contestants. Eric, Kathy, and Frederick are behind a door and asked to place their hands on a scanner. The winner's hand will open the door. Winner, reveal yourself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? Out of here. What? I knew it! There's, I, I, did you like do the order wrong where first you were like, loser, come on out? Okay. are the winner. <laughs> on the $233,000. Oh my God. Wow. After Kathy is officially named the winner, the door will now open for the mole. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the episode then goes into things we didn't know about the first time around like how Kathy, Eric, and Steven all tied for the least correct answers. But since it took Steven longer to complete the quiz, he was eliminated. Then they go over how Frederic sabotaged the game and how she kept $80,000 out of the pot. Corbin was taking complete control of putting the raft together and all attention was on Corbin and nobody paid attention to me loosening up a few knots. <laughs> Celebrity Mole Hawaii's finale was a rating success and was followed by Celebrity Mole Yucatan in 2004. The American version of The Mole ended in 2008. So why has Celebrity Mole stuck with me all these years later? There is so much I couldn't go over because I didn't want this video to be three hours long. 
I watched because I loved Eric Von Denen, and if he was eliminated early, I probably would have stopped watching. However, I was fascinated by what felt like a real view of these celebrities and the ridiculous situations that they found themselves in. The show was edited in a way that was compelling and entertaining. And as a viewer, I wanted to play along and find out who was the mole. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell for future Let's Babble About videos. Also, please tell me about your thoughts on Celebrity Mo Hawaii in the comments section. If you'd like to see Let's Babble About videos before their YouTube premiere, head over to our Patreon. And if you like TV and movie reviews, please listen to my podcast, Offscreen Babble, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Special thanks to my Offscreen Babble co-host and husband, Kyle.